Good morning, this is Clay from Popel's Backyard Farm. And if you followed us yesterday, I was mixing the soil for my bucket system. And as you can see, I have it all complete. And I have my vegetables planted. I have uh, Jetstar tomatoes. And I have a broccoli every other one so that it gives the tomatoes a chance to grow and spread out. Now the beauty of this bu bucket system is if you get tired of or you find that one plant isn't doing well or these two are that are side by side are getting bushed in together you can pull the broccoli out of here put it on another another area slide this down and put something small in between like like my celery or anything. I have the celery planted all eight buckets are all tight together so that the wind doesn't grab them and if you're wondering what these these poles are now what happens during the windy rainy season your tomatoes will get up about this high and then you might end up getting a few broken branches so what I do is I put these half inch conduit which are probably about three feet long I stab them down into the bucket while the plants are young that way the roots can grow around them and I can take tomato clips and clip the tomato right to the right to the conduit and by the time the tomatoes are up this high the bottoms of the tomatoes are about this big around and they're plenty healthy enough to stand up on their own but that's what I use these poles for I got uh, some planters I ended up putting some candied onions in and I have cauliflower down through here there's eight of those and there's still room if I if I want to slide these down there's room that I can put a uh, another plant in here because this each one of these um, trough systems will hold nine buckets and I didn't even get to use the blue Lowe's buckets that I bought for this. I had enough buckets around that I could finish up the garden. I wanted to show you how brittle some of these uh, buckets can get after they've been in the sun. If you get the, the ones that are plastic like this, you can see they just bust straight apart once the sun gets to them for a season. So you you want to get be careful of and try to get the buckets that are more of a, a rubber bucket, rubberized, like uh, Lowe's or Home Depot buckets. Now down on this end, I have the I have the cherry tomatoes, so that they're not cross pollinating with the big tomatoes. So it keeps the cherry tomatoes small. You keep them the opposite end of your garden. And these are that are planted in between are. They call them coolapino peppers. They're jalapeno peppers with no heat. You can find them in most of all your um, planting guides. And uh, some are called Fulio jalapeno. Some are called coolapino like these. I bought these at uh, Lowe's. I got garlic planted over here in this tray. So I just want to show you that I still have uh, vacancy for more buckets and more plants. So I have uh, the mini bell peppers that I'm growing are in the greenhouse. Once they're ready to come outside, these spots are going to have the mini bells. Because I like the mini bells because they're uh, nice for snacking on. Now, I've had some questions about the bucket system itself and I'm going to go over that right now with you I have a demo a demo trough over here and I will show you and tell you the dimensions of everything about it now this is the this is the trough system right here what it is is it's a rain gutter 
with two ends. Two two befores. Doesn't matter what your length is, whatever accommodates your particular area. You cut the two befores just short of your cap going on. So the thing to do first is to put your rain gutter together, put the cap on it, and then silicone on the inside so that you're not leaking. Silicone the, the cap to the tray. Then you measure from the inside of the cap and for end, and that's the length of your two before. Now these are both two befores. You can use two by sixes, but two befores are cheaper, and as you can see, they don't go down to the bottom of the two before, so it sets perfectly good. Then you take seven inch pieces of pine and you put them all the way down through on the back of your two befores. That way you have something to put on top of your concrete blocks or whatever you're going to put them on because you have to have this completely level so that that water level is level. If you have it up just a little bit all your water is going to be down on one end and the ones, the plants on this end are not going to get much water at all, if any. Then you get some screws. I got the self-tapping, so it made it easier. And I just drilled right through. I put the, the plastic level with the top of the tube before, and I put a screw about every 10 inches apart. Now, what this does is it gives you a, a surface to set your buckets on and your bucket will set on there and it gives you room for a three inch net cup or a two inch net cup underneath the bucket or if you want to just drill the hole in the bottom of the bucket and put a wick made of um, cotton material and make sure that you have the cotton material gets wet before you fill your bucket with dirt and just leave the wick down into the water and you can go most of the summer without having to water anything but these trays. All right, hopefully I gave you an idea how to do this. It's really simple. It's not hard to do. Anybody that's got a little carpentry skills could do this with no problem. Even if you don't have carpentry skills, you can do this. But as you can see, what I do is I take a tube of six, and I put it on top of concrete blocks all the way down through and I level it this way. And that's my start point. Then I take and set the I set the troughs on top of the one end on top of the tuba sixes. And then I go to the other end and build it up with either a concrete block with shims of different pieces of wood or I'll show you over here. Pardon the mess because I had to clean up the, the blue tarp. I've got to, I've still got to clean all this mess up. But you can see I've got different types of stone there to level it up. Once you get that tray level, you build up the center and do the same thing. Now see I only have a 7 inch piece of wood on this end, in the center, and on that end to hold the two, or two befores together. And once you get that trough level, you don't have to worry about it. You, you fill your buckets with dirt and soil and whatever mixture you want to use. And they see how they just set right on top of the both sides, set right on that two before. And the buckets set nice on top of the two befores. And they're really easy. And then you just leave yourself a little opening down here in the end so you can put your uh, garden hose. Or if you got a rain barrel, you can take a watering can and just keep filling your troughs. As you come out once a day and make sure your troughs have got water. And that's about all you have to do. Then when you come out once a day and look and see if you've got any... Uh, weeds 
coming up around your plants. If they do, you just pluck them out, throw them in your lawn, and let it mulch up with the lawnmower. I hope this helped you, and I help, hope that uh, I give you a few ideas of how to do a, a bucket garden. I can tell you from experience that I have rototilled and put my garden in before, and you've got to pick rocks, you've got to pick up sticks, you've got to chop up chunks of soil, you've got then you've got to bend and uh, pick up all that mess. And with this, everything is waist high. You don't get rabbits eating your plants off. If you wanted cabbage, put cabbage in them. You don't have the rabbits. You don't have the, the tomato worms. I know a lot, of people, uh, a lot of people get tomato worms and they eat your plants right up. With it up in the air like that, you don't have the pests. You don't have the back breaking work. You're not running a rototiller and then you're two day, sore for two days running a rototiller. And then another couple of days picking rocks and, and bending over to plant your plants in the ground. And then you've got to get a hoe and weed out all the weeds that are growing up. Oops, oops excuse me weed out the weeds that are growing up around your plants this way you don't have that problem now I put the candied onions in and I had a few extra onions so what I did is I just went alongside the broccoli and I put what was left in this alongside the broccoli by the time the onions are up high enough for a, a salad or something I just pull that out and it doesn't disturb the root system of the broccoli or anything. So hopefully you you got a little bit of the idea on this. And uh, I hope this helped you. If you have any questions about the system, uh, by all means, ask at the bottom of the with the comments. One thing I do want to let you know, I'm sure a lot of you already know, that when you're planting broccoli or cauliflower in it and they come in those little cubes plant them to the top of that cube don't go deep with your your plants celery comes the same way all that but tomatoes on the other hand will have a long stem you pick off the bottom when you go to plant those you pick off your bottom leaves and you can plant those deep now these tomatoes were probably a foot high when I put them in and you can see right now they're only like six inches that's because most of the tomato is down into the bucket so the root system is about halfway to the bottom and that way it gets can get the water that's sucked up from the net cup and your root systems will grow right down through the net cups right inside the the trough but you can plant tomatoes deep because that way they'll They'll get a better root system and they'll make the stalk stronger. All right, uh, I can't think of anything else that might help you. Um, I did the demo and the, the trough so you could see how it was done. You can make the trough any length. Um, the troughs for the gutter system, is, they come 10 foot lengths. You could buy 10 foot. Two before us, or go and just cut the trough off at eight and make eight foot. Um, but if you go with the ten foot, you can get nine buckets on each one. That's a lot of tomatoes and a lot of peppers and a lot of everything in just a little area. As these get bigger and they get bushier and they start disturbing each other, I'll pull one or two out and put them down farther and put maybe a pepper in its place or a broccoli in its place so that some of them are getting a little more shade from the tomato plants. Bok choy. Bok choy works great in these. Okay, this is Clay from Popel's Backyard Farm. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something from it and you take and do some of this yourself. Alrighty, bye bye. And remember, big or small, you too 
be a backyard farm. Bye-bye.